What is up guys? Welcome to my GPC semifinals match against Trev CL, Trev the King. Uh, he replaced Pierre during the season. Uh, this is a team that we've taken on before. Before we get started on the team builder though, um, this, like I said, is a team that we faced before, but it was replaced by a different coach. So I technically have not placed the team, uh, faced the team, and it's changed a lot. So I had to do a lot of uh, intricate building around it. Uh, if you guys don't remember, well, his team has Mega Blastoise, Victini, Skarmory, Tapu Bulu, Meloetta, Zygarde 10%, Nidoking, Swellow, and Vikavolt. So... Uh, this video, this uh, game was actually supposed to be had last week, but because of uh, some issues, uh, I was supposed to play Ethan initially. You guys heard that in my last video in the uh, Week 10 battle, but because Zazo uh, has been so busy and he's kind of quit Pokemon, he had to drop out of GPC playoffs, which means we don't get a chance to face Zazo in the finals, uh, which means that uh, we have to go up against Trev. Trev, who technically plays fifth. Uh, and I technically placed first because Zazzle left. So I'm up against Trev CL and Trev, uh, I've beaten before. I excel against good players. Uh, I have a very good record of, against them in general, but uh, he's got a very scary team. You guys heard me call it out. Mega Blastoise, Victini, Skarmory, Tapu Bulu, Meloetta, Zygarde 10%, Nido King, which does work, Swallow, and Vikavolt. Uh, and my team, of course, is made up of Mega Lopunny, Jirachi, Zygarde 50%, uh, Lolan Marowak, Thundee T. Uh, Aromatisse, Blastoise, Gorgeist, and Ditto. So you guys see the team in front of you. We're going to go over each member. I'm about to have this game. I am shaking. I am so nervous. You guys have no idea. Uh, but first, let's go over Thunderous. So this Thunderous set was built uh, in a way to uh, capitalize not only on him having Stealth Rocks up initially, uh, but also being able to take a big hit from something and benefit from it. So as you can see, we're Salic Berry, Volt Absorb, uh, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, Dark Pulse, and Nasty Plot. So, Thunderbolt is able to hit his Mega Blastoise, his Skarmory, uh, his Swellow, and that's about it. It's able to hit those three extremely hard. Dark Pulse is able to hit the Meloetta and the Victini for super effective damage, and then Hidden Power Ice is able to hit the Tapu Bulu, the Nido King, and the Zygarde 10%. I've EV'd my Thunderous in a way where I can set up a nasty plot. I don't need all the special attack in the world, so I've added some investment into defense and HP. If I come in on a banded Zygarde's Thousand Arrows uh, and rocks aren't up, I can live and I get my Salic Berry. Uh, I can take a an Ice Beam from a Blastoise, from, from a Mega Blastoise uh, from full HP. I can take a Dark Pulse or a Scald from a Mega Blastoise after rocks and it'll put me into Salic. Basically, the idea is make sure Thunder doesn't come in until the late game, support it with all the rest of the mons, set up a nasty plot, and that's that. The game ends. Now, a couple of obstacles in my way. One, the Vika Volt, of course. Uh, that thing doesn't die to anything even at plus two. Dark Pulse does a lot, but it does not kill. Uh, the Nido King, if it's got a Yachi Berry, anything with a berry to reduce the damage, is going to be able to take it quite well. Assault Vested Meloetta, which is something that I ran into uh, in my mock. Uh, versus Jar. I also ran into Scarf Meloetta. I wanted to be able to cover both with this team because both are very good against me. Meloetta is coming 100%. If I don't see Meloetta, there's something wrong. <laughs> Something's gone wrong uh, because that, that Mon does so well against me. It has coverage for everything. HPI, Shadow Ball, uh, Psychic, and Hyper Voice hit my entire team. He can even run U-Turn over Hyper Voice and he'll be fine with that. But Shadow Ball does so well against me. Psychic uh, and Hidden Power Ice just tear through me. So I have to be very careful around the Meloetta. Uh, so this is my Thundee set, Raigeki. Hopefully gonna put in some work this, uh, this game, because if not, I am out of playoffs, and that is the end of our run this season. I do not want to be out in first round of playoffs again, guys. I've gone through it twice. I've only been in two playoff games in my entire career, and both were losses. So I definitely want to make sure that I come out of this with a win, at least make finals. At least I can say that I, make, I made finals in the GPC uh, this season. Next up, we have L, which is the Gorgeist. So uh, Gorgeist this week is designed to take hits uh, from just about everything except for Victini, realistically. Uh, I can take hits from Mega Blastoise, uh, except for a Dark Pulse. If he doesn't bring Dark Pulse, it's ridiculous, because it hits like four members on my team really hard uh, for super effective damage on three. Um, the Skarmory, I can take on 1v1 because of Will-O-Wisp. The uh, Tapu Bulu, I wall completely and I can burn it. Uh, the Meloetta, Shadow Ball is going to do a lot, but I have checks to Shadow Ball. You guys are going to see that in the back. Uh, Zygarde 10% is what I really want this for, because that thing can run through me if it sets up a Dragon Dance. Uh, it can carry Crunch, but because of my defensive investment, I can definitely take one, and I can Will-O-Wisp it. If he is a substitute Dragon Dance set, 
then he's lacking coverage for something because he has to have thousand, thousand arrows and crunch to be able to hit my Gorgeist. So he's lacking coverage somewhere. Either he doesn't have E-Speed uh, for priority or he doesn't have Outrage to hit my Blastoise harder, anything like that. Synthesis is to be able to keep this thing healthy and Leech Seed is to be able to catch switches into things like Swallow so that I can heal up my other Mons, whatever my switch in might be. Uh, I can pretty much uh, take on the Vikavolt for the, for the most part 1v1 because of my SPDF investment. You guys see that we're 144 Impish, 116 in SPDF, and then the rest goes into HP. So that's the uh, Gore Guys set. Moving on, we have Lucky and Bad. I did bring this against Pierre. It's a very effective set. I have 256 speed. This outspeeds Mega Blastoise. If he brings Tapu Bulu, if it is Choice Banded, I do not expect it to be Jolly. So I will outspeed it. If it's Choice Scarfed, there's no way I can outspeed it anyway. So the speed is strictly for Mega Blastoise. I can wall his Tapu Bulu and I can weaken it with Iron Head. You guys see I'm a minus attack nature. That's just because I don't want to drop either one of my defenses. Uh, because I do have Wish on this set, and because I have Thunderbolt. So I went with a minus attack nature. Even if he's max HP, max defense, impish Tapu Bulu, he still takes upwards of 53% from Iron Head. So it really doesn't matter that I'm a negative attack nature. Uh, I can still beat him even if he's sub uh, bulk up. I can beat him down. Uh, as long as he's not faster than me, which he would need a lot of speed. He would need to be Jolly to outspeed me. And knowing that his Tapu Bulu is Jolly is very good information. It means that my Gore guys can always switch in. It means that my Thunderous can live a hit. Uh, it means a lot of things for this matchup. So this is Lucky and Bad Jirachi. I've also got Stealth Rocks on here. They're super important against this team, especially against the Victini, the Vikavolt, and the Swellow. Those are the three biggest things that I do want to hit with the Stealth Rocks. So got to make sure those stay up as much as possible. His form of hazard removal is Defog with Skarmory or Rapid Spin with Mega Blastoise. Mega Blastoise is more than likely going to be his hazard removal because it can hit Gorgeist uh, and it can hit both of my ghosts being uh, Lolan Marowak and Gorgeist for super effective damage uh, with its technical stab uh, Dark Pulse. So I definitely do not want to uh, spin block too often. Hopefully he's uh, defog on Skarmory. That would be a lot better. Uh, you guys can see I'm not bringing Megalopony into this game. The reason is he has too many things that check it well. Mega Blastoise can take a hit, can Aura Sphere me back. Victini can be Scarfed, has Psychic uh, Stab. So does Meloetta. Uh, and Meloetta can take a hit as long as it's not a high jump kick. Skarmory can take two high jump kicks if it's fully defensive. Uh, Tapu Bulu can switch in on one of my attacks if it's a defensive set. His, uh, I'm not gonna go any further, you guys understand. He can be Scarf Zygarde, he can be uh, Scarf Superpower Nidoking, uh, Scarf Swallow even, or even just uh, Timid Specs and expect me to want to speed creep something else and go Adamant. Uh, any one of those is uh, is definitely possible. Vikavolt can switch into a high jump kick plus a return if it's bulky. So there's oh, there's way too many things that take on Megalopony. I cannot bring it this game, it does not do well. Uh, in our first game against Pierre, I think it did really well because he didn't have half the team that Trev does now, so that's uh, pretty much it. Next up, we have Drizzy. Now, this is a big win con for me. We have Zygarde with a Yachi Berry, uh, Thousand Arrows, Iron Tail, Dragon Dance Coil. If you guys remember, this is the set that I brought in week one versus Josh. It's a very similar set. I'm running max attack, adamant. I'm running enough speed to outspeed a Jolly Max Speed Bulu. Uh, as well as a uh, modest Nido King, so that I can hit them both with a thousand arrows. Uh, Yachi Berry is to cover the possibility of Glaciate on Victini, uh, the Hidden Power Ice on Meloetta, the Ice Beam on Nido King. Uh, Nido King is his likely rocker unless he brings Skarmory, which is also very likely. Uh, it also covers Hidden Power Ice on Vikavolt, uh, Ice Beam on Mega Blastoise. So if I get up to plus one, Mega Blastoise switches in on rocks. I go for thousand arrows, he goes for Ice Beam to revenge me. It's not going to kill because of the Yachi Berry. If he doesn't freeze me, I knock him out on the following turn. Because of the Dragon Dance, as long as I can hit Iron Tail, I should be good to go. If I find out that one of his Mons is specifically physical, such as his Victini, and it's only got physical coverage, I can set up a Dragon Dance. If it switches in to be sacked, I can go for a Coil on the following turn. Iron Tail will always hit after the Coil. So... That covers the Tapu Bulu. It hits the uh, Vikavolt uh, a little bit harder, I believe. I know the first Thousand Arrows is neutral. I think both are neutral because it is a bug type as well. I think Thousand Arrows actually hits a little bit harder. Um, and then you have things like... Uh, well, I mean, Iron Tail is really only there for the Bulu, realistically. So I might have I might have been able to run something else. But I really think this set can put in a lot of work. Especially with... You guys see that I have the Wish here, the uh, Synthesis here. Now I have... Another Wish Passer, Zazo, the uh, Aromatis. I decided to name it after our long-departed friend, Zazo. Uh, I've got Moonblast, Wish, Heal Bell, and Calm Mind. Now, typically with Aromatis, you do see physically defensive variants, uh, and that's because it, it, if it's setting up Calm Minds, it gets a boost in SPDF anyway. But I'm not using Aromatis necessarily to always set up. 
Uh, I'm gonna be using it as a check and a wall to his Mega Blastoise, as well as a possible Special Victini if it's not fully invested modest, uh, and a Meloetta if it's fully special, if it's not the Pirouette set. Uh, I, I, this thing walls so many things, dude, guys. Uh, at plus one, I take less than 50% from a Nidoking Sludge Wave. That's how bulky this thing is on the special side. It's so good. Uh, Swallow can't damage me that much even with Specs Boom Burst. Uh, I'll, I'll take the hit. The problem is I don't have Protect on the set, and the reason I don't is because I absolutely need Heal Bell. In my mock against Jar, Heal Bell came in clutch because so many things got status. Jar brought a sub toxic protect zygarde 10% with thousand arrows beautiful set checked everything on my team so so well everything but zygarde realistically uh but even if even if it didn't check zygarde necessarily he still got a poison off on it and that's that's what is really annoying and the fact that he has protect i absolutely need heal bell and not only for that uh for other things on his team his blastoise can scald burn me uh his victini can burn me with blue flare or, or paralyze me with thunder or paralyze me with fusion bolt uh, there's a lot of possible status that can be spread around on my team, and I definitely want to be able to get rid of it. And the most important one is my Blastoise itself. I'm bringing a Wakanberry set. This set is built to counter his... <laughs> it's funny, I have counter on it. Uh, it's built to counter his Victini. Um, if he goes for a Thunder with a Wakanberry, I can take it. If he goes for a Fusion Bolt and hits me uh, after Rocks, after the Wakanberry... Uh, I knock him out with the counter unless he's fully HP invested. Rapid Spin is there to be able to get rid of Hazard so that Thunderous can do its job later as well, so that Aromatisse and Gorgais can switch in better without having Hazards up on the field. Trev doesn't have a tremendous amount of Hazards. He's only got Skarmory to set up Rocks and Spikes uh, and Nidoking for Rocks as well. But if he does start Spike stacking me, I am in trouble because my entire team is grounded outside of Thunderous and that is my win con. I don't want to bring it into, until late in the game or if it's on a revenge on Mega Blastoise. So uh, that's the reason I have Spin on there. And you guys see Rest. Now this is very important because of the bulk that I have around my team. Uh, Blastoise is a secondary check to his Zygarde. And because Jar brought the Toxic set, I was able to rest it off and sit there and take his thousand arrows like they were nothing and stall him out of thousand arrows and at any given time I could have clicked counter or scald gotten a burn and his Zygarde was having a hard time uh, four hit KOing me it was doing just under 25% I believe uh, maybe a little bit more maybe it was doing yeah I was doing about 28 excuse me so it was outside of four hit KO range which means I was always able to rest on him which was clutch and uh, able to get off those rapid spins uh, Trev doesn't have a ghost on his team, so I'm, I'm looking to take advantage of that by being able to spin. At this point, Blastoise, I believe, is my only rapid spinner. Uh, my only hazard removal on my team. And I decided that that would be a good idea because I saw my pot potential opponents in playoffs. And the only real one with a uh, dangerous team with hazards is Paul with Toxic Spikes. So um, I decided not to pick up too much hazard removal as I went into playoffs. And to make sure that I had Mons that could not only force prep but also uh, be threatening in their own way. So this is the team for Trev, guys. I haven't checked Discord yet. I don't know if he's messaged me. I don't know exactly when we're starting. We're waiting on Garrett so that he can tweet out the game. Uh, he might message me right here, for all I know, on, uh, on Battle Area, where we're going to play. But I am extremely nervous for this game. I do not want to lose. And I think I am well equipped with a team that can take on Trev. And Trev is an amazing player. He's going to see a lot of sets coming. But I hope that he doesn't see the Raigeki, uh, the uh, Thunderous T, T set with the Salic Berry because Jar didn't see it coming. And uh, it didn't work out against Greg. Greg was the other mock battle that I had. And uh, it didn't work out as well against him. But I think I still, cl uh, no, he clutched out a win. Greg definitely clutched out a win with uh, Sub Victini, uh, which Jar also brought actually. He brought two Sub Mons. And Sub Victini is really, really good against me because it does four switches. So that was a really good bring on his part. So hopefully uh, I'm able to take on Trev the King, Trev CL, and uh, beat him once again in the GPC because we did that last season with our uh, Uxie that paralyzed everything and uh, got a bunch of full paras, clutch full paras. So uh, let's see if we can do it again. I do have a little bit of status on this team, of course, with burns from Scald uh, and burns from Will-O-Wisp and a little bit of hacks from Jirachi. Uh, Thunderbolt seems to always para. Every time, I swear to God, every mock battle that I've had and even in the game against Pierre, I have paralyzed Skarmory every single time that I have clicked Thunderbolt. Every time. And it's always come in clutch. 
because Skarmory always gets full parrot on a turn that it wants to do something like Defog or Whirlwind. It's crazy. It's insane. Like Jirachi versus Skarmory. I might be jinxing, jinxing myself here, but Jirachi versus Skarmory is so clutch. Uh, guys, uh, I'm going to pause it, and when we get back, we are going to be live comming this game, and that's why this video is so long. If you're wondering, it's not because it, it took a million turns necessarily, because we are going to try to get through this game relatively fast. It is because I am going to be live comming the game, and the only other game that I have live commed this season, I won, and I have a very good record with live comming games uh, recently. Not in the UPA, the very first league I was in, but other than that, I have a very good record with, uh, with live comming games, so... Uh, I hope that that somehow sways the tides and then I'm able to talk myself through plays uh, Make calcs correctly. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah, we uh, we got to scout every set. We got to figure everything out. So Here's to that. Um, I'm, I'm still extremely nervous guys. I'm sorry this team builder took so long But uh, yeah, we are gonna pause it and when we'll be back uh, When we get back, we're gonna be up against Trev in the battle. So stay tuned All right guys, we are here. We are about to challenge Trev is underway. Uh, we actually have to wait for the GPC to tweet it out and and everything. So uh, you guys are gonna see the uh, the, the team matchup, and uh, then I'm gonna have to pause it again. Oh, okay. All right. So almost everything that Jar brought except for what? What did he not bring? The no. I was about to say the Bulu. No, that's not it. The Zygarde. Huh. All right. That's interesting. We'll see how that works out. Um, alright, so, let's post the link in the, uh, GPC chat, and, uh, Gareth is gonna tweet it out, I'm gonna send it out to all my peeps and every one of my servers, <laughs> and, uh, get them in here, and then we're gonna mute spectators, because then it's gonna be very, very distracting, uh, to have everybody talking in here, so we are gonna pause, and, uh, when we are ready to choose our leads, we are going to, uh, come back and choose our leads, so we'll be right back. Alright guys, so we're ready to start, um, we've gotten the okay to start, now, looking at this matchup, I don't see anything that severely threatens, um, my Blastoise lead, because if he leads with any of his special attackers, being Swellow, Victini, or his Mega Blastoise, or even his, uh, Meloetta, I can just go into my Aromatisse, eat up the hit, and get up a Wish, so, I think I'm gonna lead off with Blastoise, because it covers the Victini lead, and uh, it can beat the Skarm 1v1, essentially. So that's what I'm going to go for. Um, and yeah. I'm just going to say good luck, have fun, Trev. I swear to God, if he brought like a complete meme team and he's going to throw the game, <laughs> I'm going to be so pissed. All right. Um, yeah, we're leading off with Blastoise. All right, so he does lead off with the Victini. Now, I just want to calc something. Victini. Whoops. Vic Teeny. Uh, Mix Teeny versus Blastoise. Blastoise. Bulky Spinner. No, 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 no. I want my set. Thank you very much. Blastoise. I really hope my EVs didn't get messed up. Let's hope. Uh, everything seems in check. Yes, we are okay. All right. Good, good. All right. Um, so, Energy Ball does 52 to 62. Thunderbolt does 26 to 31. Now I have the rest. I can live any electric attack. And even after I lose my Wakan Berry, uh, I still don't die to his Thunderbolt afterwards, even if he's Life Orb. So I, I specifically calc that when I was building the spread. And that's with 160 special attack investment. With, a, with 252, he might, uh, but he still needs two high rolls. So I think here I'm just going to fire off a Scald. Uh, if, should he go for the Bolt Strike, I'll see the damage. Uh, he's going to go for the U-turn, gets a crit turn one. Not a big deal. Uh, we do have the uh, the rest on this set, so we should be okay. He's going to go into his Blastoise. Do we get the burn? We do not get the Revenge burn, unfortunately. And uh, I'm going to go directly into my check to this, which is my Aromatisse. And uh, then I think we're going to fire off a uh, Moon Blast on the following turn. And see what happens. So I just want to calc that crit damage from Victini with the U-turn. U-turn to my Blastoise. 14 to 17. Uh, does he get the burn? No, he does not. Okay, good. Um, U-turn crit. Uh, not Z, thank you. Crit. 
21 to 26. How much did he do? 22.4? Okay. So Victini is not heavily attack invested. That's what that means. Because if it had max attack, it would not have... Oh, wait. That's what the life orb. Hold on. Get that off of there. Yeah, he might be max attack scarf. Okay. So Victini is actually max attack. Let's just write that down. Max attack. All right. So I think here, just to play it safe, <clears throat> I'm just going to throw up a wish. I don't lose anything by throwing up a wish. As uh, he does get the burn. Uh, it's not a big deal because I do have the heal bell. And uh, flash cannon doesn't kill me. So I can, if I want to, just throw out a moon blast here and damage whatever comes in. If it's Tapu Bulu, it's not a big deal. I do get my health back, and I can switch back in on this later and just get off another, just get off a heal bell initially. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the moon blast here, as he is gonna switch out into his Tapu Bulu. That is fine. I do have a response to this in my uh, Jirachi. Now he could pull out a. Oh, he has leftovers. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu. Glad I noticed that. Lefties. Alright, how much did my Moon Blast do? Let's find out. Aromatis. Uh, uh, Zazo versus Bulu. Uh, if he's like a, a max attack, max speed variant, for example. My Moon Blast would normally do 37 to 44. Okay, so he, yeah, he's not, he's not an HP invested. Uh, unless I got like an absolute min roll. He shouldn't be uh, HP invested. So, knowing that, uh, I'm going to switch out into my Jirachi. If he pulls a double, good on him, but he didn't, because he's still in here. There's the bulk up, so I did predict that. I did expect that to come. However, he does not have a Z move, and we can take attacks from this thing all day. All day, baby, all day. Um, I think my rocks are quite important in this game. Uh, enough for me to want to risk this, because how much does Tapu Bulu... Essentially choice banded with a wood hammer due to my Jirachi. Uh, I, th I think it does under half. It does 45 to 54. That's if he's max attack adamant at plus one. And we've already noticed that he doesn't have HP investment. He could still have defense investment. But at plus one, my Iron Head is still doing 32 to 39. And he has to know that. So I'm going to throw up the rocks. As he does stay in and goes for a brutal swing. Ooh, that's cool tech. I like that. All right. Well, I'm going to attempt to uh, flinch him down a little bit with Iron Head. Uh, now that I know that I'm faster as well, so... Rachi... Equals faster. Faster. Alright, so he goes into his Blastoise. He takes 9% from my Jirachi. That's actually quite a bit considering that I'm minus attack nature. Blastoise. Mega Blastoise. You do 86 to me. <laughs> Oh god, that's max special attack modest. I do not want to take that. Uh, I'm pretty confident he's going to spin though. My Thunderbolt does 36. His grassy terrain's about to wear out. Uh, my Thunderbolt does 36 to 40. Which means, uh, unless I get two pretty high rolls, I'm not too hit KOing this. Um, I could just directly switch into my Aromatisse. That doesn't do a lot for me. That's the problem. At least now I know that I can always switch into his Bulu. Eventually, he will predict it because Trev is a good player. Um, my Iron Head did how much again? 9%? Alright, so he has a little bit more HP than that, actually. Um, so, I think he's max HP. Yeah, I think that's the only way it would have done 9%. Uh, I would have done a little... I mean, if I reduce this a little bit, it goes to like 9.3, 9.4. It's, it's not increasing by much. Um, I could throw out a Thunderbolt here. If I do that, I risk my check to his Bulu. I think I would rather him get rid of rocks than me lose my check to my Bulu, to his Bulu. So I am going to go into my Aromatisse. That works out for me. I do get it in right here. And uh, his Grassy Terrain ends, which means we do not get as ba ba back as much recovery. Excuse me. Um, but I can just throw out a Moon Blast here once again. Everything is relatively healthy. I could also go for a Wish or even a Heal Bell to make sure the burn is gone on this. Uh, his Bulu's at 97, and that's actually really good chip damage because um, Thunderous, two hit KOs with a Hidden Power Ice, if he doesn't get Grassy Terrain and Leftovers Recovery. If he does, I don't two hit KO after Rocks. So I need a little bit more chip on that thing if I want to beat it. 
So I am just gonna go into uh, I am just gonna go for a moon blast here. The worst he can do to me is Scald, and uh, that's not doing too much. And I get have a chance of uh, special attack dropping him. And I'm actually gonna go for a Wish on this turn. As he goes for a rapid spin, that's fine with me. Uh, what can he bring in to threaten me? Victini, that's the worst thing. Let's go for the heal bell here. As he does go out into Skarmory, that is fine with me. My burn is cured, and the worst that Skarm can do to me is Iron Head. How much is Skarm's Iron Head gonna do if he's defensive? Which I think he is for the Lopany. Iron Head. Uh, to my Aromatis set. He does 46 to 55, so that's actually quite a bit. Uh, I don't really want to take that. I am going to go into my Blastoise here on its potential uh, Stealth Rocks. Yep, there we go. All right. And uh, I think I'm just going to throw out a Rapid Spin. I have no reason not to. Even if he goes Bulu, I still have my check to it alive. Uh, eventually, he's going to have to start predicting. And I think it would be on the following turn. I think it would be when he goes into Bulu, he expects my Rachi to come in. And he doubles out into Victini. And I think he has to make another prediction. On as to what I'm going to go into. He can catch me off guard with the Victini. Absolutely. That's probably the biggest threat to my team is the Victini. So I'm going to get off the Rapid Spin right there. He is Rocky Helmet for the... Um... Okay. Alright, I see you. Alright, he is Rocky Helmet for the Lopany. So while I could throw out a Scald here, I am just going to go for Rapid Spin again because I do expect him to switch on this turn. And uh, I do have the rest. So I'm not concerned with the Rocky Helmet damage. Unless he like crits me with Brave Bird. <laughs> That's the worst that can happen. He does stay in again. Does he go for the rocks again? No, he goes for Roost. Okay, good. All right, so let's go for the Scald. I think he knows that he has to get up rocks. Uh, and I do too. How much is Blastoise at now? 54, okay, so it's in two hit KO range from Jirachi's Thunderbolt, so that's really good. All right, so let's throw out a Scald here. Let's see if we can get the burn. We do not, as he throws back up his Stealth Rocks. And I need this healthy enough to live an attack. He's not going to hard switch into Victini here on a possible Scald. So, knowing that, I'm also... Did I speed invest in this Blastoise? I think I did. No, I didn't. I didn't. I'm just naturally faster. Uh, that's why I'm beating him on speed. Alright, um, I think I'm just going to go for another Scald here. I have no reason not to. I wish on Jirachi, and until he gets up to plus one with his Bulu, he's not doing anything to me with Brutal Swing. We saw that it only does 40% at plus one. So yeah, I'm just going to throw out another Scald here. Try to get a burn. Attempt to. I do not. He goes for Roost. Uh, that is fine. And uh, I am just going to Scald again, because he's not going to risk a burn on his Bulu. And if he goes into Blastoise, he risks a burn on that as well. So I'm just going to keep firing off Scalds, as he's just going to keep going for Roost to get back into Sturdy, which is smart. All right, so um, he's never going to switch in Teeny. He could switch in Meloetta here. That wouldn't be a bad play. I'm just going to go for the Scald again. I have no reason not to. Like, that's that's just my play. Yeah, and I do get the burn eventually. There we go. So finally, he torments me, which is <laughs> actually going to work out in my favor because I am going to go for a Rest right here, I believe. Uh, I could just go for a Rapid Spin first and then a Rest. And if I get rid of the Rocks, it's really good. So yeah, I am going to go for the Rapid Spin, as I am going to take some supplemental ro uh, Rocky Helmet damage, but it's not a big deal. He does go for Rocks. He's just trying to beat me down with Stealth Rocks, uh, with Rocky Helmet damage. And I can't go for Rapid Spin this turn, and he knows that. So I'm just going to go for the Rest now, I think, because I don't want him to knock me out with a Brave Bird crit. And uh, then I think we're going to switch into Rachi hard. Yeah, I think that's the play. Let's go for Rest. We do get off the rest. What is he going to do? Roost? He is going to roost. Okay. So, uh, now he can't really do anything to me. And he realizes that he's not actually beating me 1v1. Uh, because of the fact that I do have rest on this set. And as a result, I think he's either going to go into his Blastoise. Or into his Bulu right here. So, I am just going to go into Rachi. His hazard removal is his Blastoise. He should have Dark Pulse on it. Uh, let's see what he does. He goes for Whirlwind. Smart play. Okay, so he brings in my Zygarde, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, now, I do have the Yachi Berry on here. And I think I'm just going to go for the Thousand Arrows and just smack him down. Because I don't lose anything. I think he's just trying to bring in my, uh, my Thunderous, which I wouldn't be opposed to. 
Yeah, let's just go for thousand arrows. Screw it. He doesn't know what I am. He doesn't see an item. He's gonna calc that I'm not banded right there. Uh, and he's gonna whirlwind me out again. But he is gonna get Jirachi. Fantastic. Okay, good. This is great. Alright, so I can Oko Skarmory from here because I can see that he's physically defensive from the damage that my Scalds and that my Thousand Arrows just did. So I am going to throw the bands back up. They are going back up, my friends, as he takes this as an opportunity to get his get in his Victini, which is very smart because my Blastoise is asleep now. So this is actually a bad situation for me. Um, I could have gone for T-Bolt there. It wouldn't have accomplished much. I could have gone for Wish. That would have been a good play. I think he's special. I don't think you would bring Victini without Glaciate when I have a Zygarde that is extremely threatening to your team. And I have to figure out what the hell I'm sacking now. Uh, I think Aromatisse isn't bad here unless he's V-Create. We did see that he's max attack. Hold on. We did see that he's max attack. That doesn't mean that he doesn't have Glaciate though, guys. That's not what that means. Um, I think I have to bait the electric move and switch out into my Zygarde off of Blastoise. I think that's my best play. Um, everything is taking rocks damage now. His Skarmory is burned. Uh, his Swallow is taking 25. His Blastoise comes in at 42, uh, which means it might just be in range of Iron Head plus Thunderbolt, even after Grassy Terrain. Um, it depends on what kind of rolls we get, but I think I have to go into Aromatisse. His Blastoise is weakened to the point where pretty much anything can revenge kill it now. So, I think I'm okay with letting Aromatisse go down if he does go for a V-Create. Uh, but I can also just go into my Blastoise. Has he seen Rocky Helmet? He has not. Uh, he went for U-Turn turn 1, so he saw what I was. Okay. Had I gone for counter turn 1, that would have been flames. Because um, his Blastoise would have been gone by now. So, now that I know he's max attack, I, I still need Blastoise for this, man. All right. I don't know if he's Scarfed, I don't know if he's Banded, I don't know what he is, but I am going to go into Blastoise here. He's probably selected his move already, for sure. There's the V-Create, we do see that come off. And now, if he's Choiced, he will switch out, more than likely into Tapu Bulu. If he's not Choiced, he's forced to click an Electric move here, and his speed is below my Zygarde's now. And if I get up a Dragon Dance, I can actually really threaten his team with a Dragon Dance up. Like, heavily. Holy crap. I think Bulu drops to a plus one Iron Tail. I don't want to go hard. Zygarde. Zygarde is so good in this match, though. Damn. Okay. Um, I think what we're going to do is we are going to test the waters by switching out into Aromatisse. I already evaluated that I don't necessarily need Aromatisse because it's only here for the Blastoise. So, versus his Victini, if he goes for an electric move, Nixtini goes for like uh, Thunderbolt here. Thunderbolt to Aromatisse is doing 22% max. And we've already seen V create, which means he probably doesn't have Blue Flare, which is the hardest thing that could hit Aromatisse. So I am going to go out into it. He is going to switch out into his Tapu Bulu. Very good play. However, now with the rocks up, it's very hard for him to deal with Jirachi. And Jirachi always switches in on him. Uh, and even with, the, uh, even with the Brutal Swing, he's more than likely not beating me 1v1. One, because I have Wish, and two, because I can flinch him. So he is going to go for the bulk up right there. Now, with the grassy terrain up, like I said, there's a very good chance that Blastoise gets knocked out with a combination of Iron Head plus Thunderbolt. What I can do here is I know how much his Brutal Swing does. We can Calc uh, Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu, Swords Dance, Max Attack, plus one. It's probably Jolly. Um, with the Brutal Swing versus my Jirachi. I'm going to calc the damage from before. So he did 40%, which is about in the range of Jolly. If he's adamant, I think he always does more. Yeah, he always does 41. And I'm going to go find the exact moment when he clicked that move. Brutal Swing. 40.7. Uh, 40.7... Uh, and his minimum is 44.1 with, uh, oh, hold on. Adamant is 41.1. So, yeah, he's not adamant. He's definitely jolly. But I, but he, we already evaluated that he doesn't have enough speed for this. So, I am just gonna go for the Iron Head here. Uh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, back up, back up, back up. So, the max he does to me is 44% with a Brutal Swing. So, if I go off, if I go for a Wish here, even if he goes into Victini... I can almost 100% safely switch in my Zygarde. 
It would burn my Yachi Berry if he predicts it and goes for a Glaciate, but it's still not a bad play because I get off damage on the Victini. And then what I can do is I can Dragon Dance to make sure that my Thousand Arrows kills his Blastoise. I, I have to run the Calc anyway, but I think my play is Wish here. All the time. As he goes for another Bulk Up. Okay. Alright, I see you. Alright, Trev. You really gonna play this game with a Jirachi in front of you? Alright, so let's go for the, the Iron Head. He's gonna be forced to Bulk Up again on the following turn. I probably should have gone for Iron Head that turn. Uh, that's gonna do 23%. It is gonna get the flinch. And he is gonna gain back enough recovery so that it doesn't matter. Um, and I think, I think here I just go for the wish again. The second I bring in my Zygarde to revenge this, it's over though. I didn't think about Brutal Swing, wow. So my Gore guys can't completely wall him, is what that means. Alright, so I am just going to go for the Iron Head here again. Because his grassy terrain does end, and we do get the flinch again. And uh, there goes his grassy terrain, the last time. And now I'm doing a lot more to this thing. Where there's a Jirachi, there's a way, guys. Where there is a Jirachi, there's a way. Okay, so how much does he do to me at plus two with Brutal Swing? 50 to 59. So I can wish here and then just repeatedly go for Iron Head. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. He does go for the Brutal Swing. It does 58%, so he gets a max roll. So I do need a flinch here. I do need the 60% flinch. Oh, I get a crit. Oh my god. And I get the flinch. Damn. Wow. Why do I always hacks Trev? Why does this happen? Like, for real. Alright, I'm, I'm just gonna go for another Iron Head because I too would KO him now. I even Oko this thing with Thousand Arrows at this point if he switches out. He's gonna switch out into his Skarmory. That's fine. I'm gonna get some Iron Head damage off on this. I do have the leftovers, so the Rocky Helmet damage doesn't matter. And his Skarmory is gonna go away. So the Skarm is gone, we get the first kill, as his Victini does come back in. Now, I'm fully expecting a U-turn. I'm not expecting a fire attack, as well as it does against my team. I don't think he lets my Zygarde come in for free because of his, uh, his Bulu being so low. So, I've seen V-Create, I didn't see him switch it up because the PP is that. Okay, so I think he's Choice Scarfed. I think he's choiced in some way. Because he switched out directly on my Blastoise rather than you turning on it. So he's definitely choiced. Uh, the question is, can I afford for Zygarde to take a U-turn at this point? Uh, do I need my Gorgeist is the other question. His Swellow probably beats it. His Victini beats it. His Blastoise beats it. Meloetta beats it. And now we figured out that his Bulu, while not beating it because it's extremely low also deals with it to some extent, especially if he's substituted and he gets back above 25%. So, I think... I think Gorgeist is my play. Um, because if he does V-Create, that's fine. And there's always a chance that I could outspeed him on the next turn. He doesn't know what kind of set I am. Uh, Gorgeist is relatively fast. So, and I could also have Shadow Sneak. So I think my play is... Actually, what do I need Blastoise for now? Potentially spinning. To get in my Thunderous. Um, is Blastoise, what have we seen? We've seen Rapid Spin, we've seen Scald. That's all we've seen. Alright, I think I go Zygarde. What's my Zygarde spread again? Uh, Alright, so it's got some HP investment. It's minus special attack. It's mostly offensive, though. Um, yeah, I think I go Zygarde here. Yep. I'm going to go Zygarde. I'm going to risk it as he goes for the V-Create. Awesome. We're able to tank that. And he's going to lose some speed, which means he's probably terrified of this right now. Now, what I could do is Dragon Dance up. Or I can just fire off a thousand arrows. And he would probably sack Bulu at this point in the match. I could also go for a Coil now that I know that I'm faster than his Bulu. And that would put my attack up. And I still have the... Yeah, I'm just going to go for an Arrows. Uh, he's going to send his, in his Blastoise to die, essentially, because it is going to take a thousand Arrows and another. Um, I could also Dragon Dance here, but I don't want him to get off the spin. Blastoise. Mega. What do you hit at Timid? Max Speed. Because I Calc Modest, usually. It hits 280, which is actually more than me, 
But I think we calced for modest earlier with the scald, right? I think. Um, I'm definitely going for arrows again. All right, cool. He still doesn't know what kind of Zygarde I am. All I know, all he knows is that I'm adamant max attack right now. That's all he knows. Swellow chooses to come in. Is this thing guts? Is this thing guts? How well does Gorg? <laughs> Why am I even asking this question? How well does Gorgeist super take a uh, a boom burst from a swallow? This is going to be a really long video. Uh, boom burst does 80 to 94. <laughs> I'm dead, guys. I'm dead. I'm just dead. Uh, if I go into Aromatisse and find out that he's physical, his first attack won't do too much, right? Swallow, uh, if he's max attack, uh, Jolly with Facade, for example. And let's put on Brave Bird on the set. Uh, I doubt he'd be physical, but just in case. Uh, we're going to check out versus Aromatisse. Uh, ours. Zazo takes 56% max. So I think Zazo's my play, no matter what. As uh, he is going to go for the Boom Burst, as we are able to chew that. Wow. That is really nice. All right. Um, now, I could switch in Rachi very easily. Uh, I'm going to calc that damage because I think he specs. Swallow, Boom Burst versus Aromatisse. And Boom Burst does 45 to 53, actually, with specs. Huh. Well then, um, not specs. Probably scarfed. Maybe scarfed. I'm not sure. And I didn't out. I didn't EV my uh, my thunderous to outspeed this. Well, I can't. It can never outspeed scarfed anyway. Um, I think he's locked. I think he's locked in. How much does Swallow do with Heat Wave to Jirachi if he's not locked in? Jirachi. Uh, my Jirachi with Heat Wave if he's not specs. It only does 42% max. So I'm going to go for a wish right here. If he switches out into his Bulu, that's fine because I can just go back into Rachi. And Rachi's healthy enough to take a Brutal Swing. And he has to pull a double and he's going to end up back where he was uh, after the rocks. So I am I have no problem with switching out into Jirachi right here. Uh, his spinner is gone. His Victini is taking 25% upon switching every single time. Uh, he does go for the Horn Leech to get himself back up to a range, I guess, where he can sub up. And I'm going to go for the wish. Um, or do I just go for the Iron Head here? Because Victini is an obvious switch. And I can only switch out of... I can only switch into Victini so many times. Uh, I think I go for the Wish here. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the Wish. He knows I have it, but I think it's still the better play. Because should I Iron Head? Okay, yeah, he does go Victini. Fantastic, okay. That's really good because I do still have the Wakan Berry intact on my Blastoise. And I can switch it in and cash the Wish. And then if he locks himself into an electric move, he's going to be forced out uh, because I do have a Zygarde in the back. So I'm going to go directly into Blastoise. He's getting some uh, some recovery with Grassy Terrain. It's not a big deal. Uh, I think he's just going to keep firing off V-Creates. I think that's his only play. Meloetta. What do I do to deal with Meloetta? I guess I use Jirachi. Shadow Ball is still scary. Uh, but I think Meloetta can't knock out uh, Thunderous. Uh, he's going to go for Glaciate, expecting my Zygarde to come in, which is not what comes in, which is fantastic. And I am going to switch back out because I am convinced that he is choiced. So this might be a misplay. I might might be a choke, <laughs> even. Uh, but I am going to go back into Jirachi here. Because I'm pretty sure he's, he's scarfed. Yeah, I'm going to go back into Jirachi. He shouldn't stay in and let me burn sleep turns. Uh, actually, what do I lose by going into Aromatisse? Because he locked himself into Glaciate, right? If I lose Aromatisse, it's not the end of the world. Because we evaluated that his Swallow is not Specs. Yeah, I'm going to go Aromatisse instead. He goes uh, Meloetta. Okay, that's that's a threat. That is a threat, my friends. <laughs> that is definitely a threat. Uh, and he is Leftovers. Okay. So, we can pretty much expect his Meloetta to be a Calm Mind variant. Uh, because we do see Leftovers. So how do I check this now, here and now? Um, I don't know how fast he made it. That's the problem. Meloetta. Okay, so if he's a Calm Mind set, right? Uh, substitute Calm Mind. 
Uh, with a lot of defense. Versus my Jirachi. Versus my Jirachi. He still takes 18 to 22 from Iron Head, which doesn't break a sub, which is annoying. Uh, but he's slower than me. With that set that I'm looking at. I'm not gonna completely base myself on a showdown set, obviously. But, uh... They're pretty reliable. Um... Yeah, I think Hard Rachi is definitely my play. I didn't bring enough for this. He goes for Hyper Voice. Oh, okay, that's fine. Alright, we did see Leftovers, so I'm expecting Shadow Ball here. Uh, I don't have a good switch into Shadow Ball. How much is Shadow Ball gonna do to my... Thunderous. Thundurus. Uh, actually, the first, let's calc that damage that he just did to us with Hyper Voice, because that seems like a lot to a max HP Jirachi. Uh, Hyper Voice is supposed to do 14 to 17, so he's not defensive. He's actually max offensive. He's max special attack, so we know that much. Uh, and Jirachi, can you take a Shadow Ball from here? Shadow Ball. 51% max from Timid, which is more than likely what he is. Because Hyper Voice from Modest, he could still be Modest, though, uh, does 19% max. Does Modest Max speed? Yeah, Modest Max speed outspeeds me. Um, does 56% max. Okay. So, Timid. Alright, I think we go for the Wish here. No, we go for the Iron Head. We are faster. We do 26%, which means we can break a sub. He goes for the Shadow Ball. It does 51%. About what I expected. Alright. So, I still have Drizzy in the back. I just want to calc if Drizzy can take a Hyper Voice from where it's at. 48% max, so yes, I can. Okay, so now I just have to play around a Scarf Victini and a Scarf Swallow. <laughs> That's fun. All right, let's go for the Iron Head again. As he does, switch in his Swallow. Wow, okay. I guess trying to take advantage of my Rachi, or he calc that that wouldn't kill, but that came really close. Um, I do have lowered Spit F, which means he's free to fire off a Hyper Voice. Uh, boom Burst, I mean. And Specs Boom Burst. Uh, it's not Specs, we know that much. All right, so how much can Swallow... Due to my Thunderous. Thunderous Therian. Uh, Raigeki. Let me do that on this side. Thunderous. With a non-specs Boom Burst. Swallow. Boom Burst. Uh, non-specs. Does 68 to 80. Hmm. I don't like that. <laughs> I think he's just going to go for a Hyper Voice here because it kills. Uh, actually, it might not. It might not kill my Jirachi. Jirachi. Uh, lucky and bad. Thunderbolt. Kills, obviously. Um, how much does Boom Burst do while I'm at minus one? Wait a minute. He did 27% to me before, didn't he? He did... No, he did... He did 37% uh, to my Aromatisse. So, I just want to recalc that real quick. Um, he has to be modest. He has to be modest, which means I think he has two Scarfers. Uh, so how much does he do to Jirachi now? Jirachi with uh, a Boom Burst while I'm a minus one Spadef does 38% max. So I think we just go for a Thunderbolt. As he is not choiced, he does go for the Heat Wave. All right. So we see that he's not choiced, but we know that he's modest, which is a problem because I don't think Thunderous can take the hit. Thunderous, Rageki, 88%. No, it can't. Shoot. Um, Alright, well, the good news is this can't come back in. Bad news, <laughs> very, very bad news, is that I do not have a way to immediately revenge this. And that is a bad call on my part. That's all it is. It's just a bad call on my part. Um, modest Boom Burst to my Zygarde. Zygarde, Drizzy... Boom Burst does 57.6. Oof. Max. That's that's harsh. That is very harsh. Damn. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think I have to go into Aromatisse and kill this now. I think that's my only play. Yeah, is just to go into Aromatisse and kill this with Moonblast because I don't have Protect. Coming back to bite me in the butt. All right, we're going for Moonblast. He does go for the Boom Burst. It does not knock me out. I do go for the Moon Blast. And uh, if he brings in Bulu, then he brings in Bulu. So be it. Uh, I might even switch in my Thunderous Hard. 
we'll see. Because he might be scared of the, um... Well, his Meloet is very specially defensive. I need a, uh, I need a nasty plot up to beat it. I need a nasty plot up. So, uh, we've already evaluated the Bulu can beat the, um, the Gorgeist. I don't need a Romatisse for anything else. I can fire off a, an Iron Tail with Zygarde. Alright. Do I just allow him to get the least amount of recovery possible? Is that what I do? How do I do that? Is that with Aromatis? Because I'm at 84 health, so he's going to get back a lot. It's definitely not with Blastoise, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> that would just kill me. Um, I think... Yeah, I think I switch out here. I keep this as a sack. Or I can Moonblast. Uh, what do I need Gorgeist for? Gorgeist loses to the Meloetta. Not necessarily, because I do have Leech Seed and Seed Bomb. Um, so it can still come through. Zazo, on the other hand, cannot beat anything anymore because rocks are up. So Moonblast. Just Moonblast. Let him take me out. That's fine. Alright. So, Sludge Wave on Zygarde is extremely obvious. Which is why I want to bring it in. And I think go for the DD. Tapu, Bulu, Zygarde, Drizzy. Iron Tail does 63% to 74. Sludge Wave would kill him. I think he would have to switch out into Meloetta. Does Meloetta die? Is the question. Does Meloetta with like max HP? Not defensive necessarily because he's not he's max special attack modest versus my zygarde drizzy at plus one no he does not he takes 61 to 73 but what if i'm at plus two 82 that's interesting all right so my game plan is going to thunderous now scare him out with the sludge wave i think go for the nasty plot and dark pulse the meloetta because it's leftovers, it's not a salt vest, and we've already seen that it's max specially offensive. So, Thunderous, Therian, Rageki, to his Meloetta with a Dark Pulse, uh, max HP if I'm at plus two, does 71 to 84. So, I think I just go for it. And if he knocks me into Salic, I think I win. What would he knock me into Salic with? Tapu, Bulu, Sword Dance, Horn Leech in Grassy Terrain does not knock me into Salak, unfortunately. Actually, it can do a max of 43, which I think does... No, he needs 50% to knock me into Salak. So knowing that, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight up for the HP Ice. And I'm going to let him hit me with a Horn Leech. I was hoping for a crit there, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but now, now, now I get into Salik when I come back in on rocks, guys. I think I might still be able to pull something out here. So I'm going to go for the next HP Ice, which does 45. Ooh, I might not kill. Oh, God. Um, I might not kill. What's the roll on this? HP Ice to Tapu Bulu if I'm at neutral. 49 to 59. No, then he has some HP investment. Um, he wasn't scared of Sludge Wave, which is interesting. He took 45. So I think he has about 164. If he's max HP, though. If he's max HP. I do 48% max if he's max HP. And that was a pretty high roll already. Alright, I'm just going to go for it. Do we kill? No, we miss out by 1%. Damn. And he's going to gain back a lot of health there. Oh, this sucks. All right. Drizzy. Um, Zygarde, I think you have to come through for me right now. I think you do. Iron Tail kills. Thousand Arrows kills after rocks, uh, but not to a max HP variant, which actually I don't even think... Yeah, Iron Tail still kills. Um... He's going to Glaciate me with Victini, but I'm going to knock him out with a Thousand Arrows. And I'm going to live the Glaciate, I think, from where I'm at. Uh, Victini. Mixtini. 
Glaciate does 47% max. So yeah, I think that's my play. No matter what, it's my play. I have to go into him. Right now. After two rockets, do I live? 12. He needs a max roll. He needs a max roll and he needs a lot of special attack investment, which I don't think he has. Um, I could also go for the... The coil doesn't help me, though. The coil doesn't help me. How much does this Bulu do to me in grassy terrain? Um, man, this is long. 50% uh, max. Hmm. That's interesting. He doesn't kill me. I could get off a DD right here. Huh. Alright. So, uh, I think we definitely go into Drizzy no matter what. I have to. I don't have a choice, and uh, I think we just go for a for an Iron Tail and miss it, <laughs> and that's the play, for sure. We try to knock out this Bulu once and for all. I've had too many opportunities to knock it out, and I haven't taken them. So I think I have to go for an Iron Tail right here, and try to knock this thing out. Please connect. Oh my God! Of course. Of course. Man, that's frustrating. That's really frustrating because now, if he thinks I'm choiced, like choice banded, he's gonna think that I'm gonna go for an Iron Tail again, and now it's a 50 50 mind game. Damn. Alright, well, I think I lose. I think I lose to this thing straight up, guys. I'm gonna go for another Iron Tail. I'm not even gonna get the, the roll on him. And he's gonna knock out my Zygarde, which was my last way of winning. So I have to go into uh, Gorgeist here, and I have to go for a Will-O-Wisp, and um, he's going to sub, which he covers perfectly. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Very nice on Trev's part. And he got up right above. <laughs> Man. That sucks. All right. He's going to go for the bulk up. Uh, seed Bomb's never going to break his sub, ever. It's going to take like 14 Seed Bombs. GG. I got nothing. He got it. He got me. He got me. Because I missed that Iron Tail, man. I guess it makes up for the crit earlier. Because this Bulu uh, should have been dead at this point. Uh, yeah, he's not He's not taking anything from this. Hey, I got a crit. All right, so yeah, that's gonna that's gonna seal it up right there. Uh, I'm just gonna keep going for seed bombs. He's just gonna brutal swing me, uh, and yeah, that's gonna be GG. I have nothing that I can do. Absolutely nothing I can do. He's just gonna go for the horn leech and knock me out. Oh man! And here I thought I was actually going to win, and I came close. I uh, identified all his sets pretty well. The swallow kind of caught me off guard, not being choiced, and. Um, Meloetta. I had nothing to deal with Meloetta at the time. That was annoying. I think if I went for the nasty plot into the HP ice, I think I won. But I went for two HP ices instead. Uh, which gave him... I don't know if that mattered. Alright guys, well, uh, unfortunately we are knocked out of playoffs once again in the first round. Uh, it's gonna be a very long video, almost an hour long. Uh, I think we did, uh, we had a very good season, regardless. Uh, I think, uh, GG to Trev as well, guys. Make sure to go check him out in the description. Uh, he has to upload this battle, even if he doesn't want to, so go watch his side. Uh, it's most definitely gonna be a post-com. This is a 60-turn battle, so, uh, that was, that was insane. That was a crazy game. Um, I was too afraid to attack, uh, what was in front of me sometimes, and I think that cost me the game. Uh, I, I got pretty close. I definitely got pretty close, and the Yachi Berry would have saved me against the Victini, so I think that I might have had that game at the end, uh, depending on exactly what would have happened, but uh, with the Meloetta specifically, I don't know what kind of set it was, uh, and I didn't have anything left to take it on. I think letting my Jirachi drop to the Heat Wave was a mistake. Uh, I think that was my biggest misplay, because I still needed it for this Bulu, uh, and it still outsped the Meloetta. And Victini was always pressured by rocks, so that was a big mistake on my part. And uh, also letting Zygarde take damage throughout the game because I would have been able to get up a couple of Dragon Dances, I think, and clutched it out. Uh, two Dragon Dances would have won me the game. So 
that's a big uh, it's a big mistake on my part unfortunately um, I would have loved to use the other teams that I had planned for finals some really heat stuff I guess I'll show you guys um, I'm not revealing anything for any of my other opponents anyway so uh, this is what I was gonna bring for Ethan uh, nice and choice banded Zygarde uh, Lopany with Facade this time for his uh, Zardex with Will-O-Wisp. Uh, Choice Scarf Jirachi with Draco Meteor. This was heat. Uh, enough EVs to uh, Oko a max HP Zard after Stealth Rocks. Zard X. Uh, and I was Scarfed, so I would speed tie him. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not max speed, obviously, but he wasn't going to run max speed. So even at plus one, he would not speed me. Uh, ditto to cover the Zard as well. This uh, These IVs right here are to get HP Ice from Shaman. Uh, then we have Raigeki. Uh, I had agility, U-turn, focus blast, and thunderbolt. So another setup set like I ran against them last time, but this one, this time it was a lot more efficient. And uh, we had an interesting aromatisse to say the least. Uh, Moon blast, thunderbolt. I, I was like, all right, I can take on Celesteela. Screw it. Uh, and then against Paul, I was going to bring uh, Thousand Arrows, Rest Coil, Toxic Zygarde, which would have been really cool. Um, Jirachi with Mago Berry, uh, which was to cover the earthquake damage from Garchomp. Um, this uh, Thunderous was still very effective against him. Uh, Thunderbolt, HP Ice, Dark Pulse, and Agility. Uh, especially if behind a sub from Megalopony, uh, which would have been crazy. I had uh, Sub Baton Pass in mind uh, to get into members that whatever his Lopany check was uh, couldn't break. Uh, and then once again, Ditto, this was like to copy his Mega Heracross. So, uh, a lot of interesting things. I had Haze on this uh, Blastoise with enough speed to outspeed uh, Adamant Max Speed Azumarill. So, if you went for a Belly Drum, I could just Haze it away. Uh, yeah, some interesting stuff. To say the least. This is cool sets. Uh, Icy Wind, Shadow Ball, Jirachi. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's going to round out our, uh, our run for the GPC. I'm actually kind of glad that I don't need to play another game because I'm sweating right now. You guys can't see it, but I am actually sweating. Uh, that game was insane. And uh, I'm going to just take a break and then come back for uh, to see what everybody else is saying. I'm going to check out the chat on the replay as well uh, because I, mute I muted spectators as you guys could see. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was a super fun game. Trev, uh, GG man. Good luck in finals. Uh, also, good luck to Ethan and to Paul. Uh, may the best man win. They're playing in a second uh, right after my game. So uh, this game did take a while. It took like 40 minutes. So hopefully Paul's not asleep. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Paul, uh, Fallop, we're actually starting up a series on both of our channels really soon, which is going to be a really cool draft, draft league format series. Uh, by the way, Trev, Trev is an amazing player, guys. If you don't know, he's in uh, the most competitive league by far. Uh, in the uh, in the draft league community, the NPL, uh, and I'm the one that brought him back in uh, to replace Pierre. Big mistake <laughs> because Trev knows what he's doing. He played this game immaculately, so so well. Um, some questionable turns on my part, uh, on his as well. I, I think I, man, I had so much pressure going in the beginning of the game, especially with rocks up. I should have made made sure that I got off the heel bell uh, and spun away his rocks once the Skarmory was gone. I think that was my main objective, or what I should have focused to be my main objective, but. Either way, uh, I think I played solidly all season. Uh, my, my loss was bound to come at some point. I think I played this a lot better, like a million times better than I did against Merc last season. Uh, I can see my improvement. And uh, Merc didn't do that great in the NPL this season. Trev still uh, had a decent season. I think they had about the same record to be realistic. But um, if this is the kind of game that I can have against a top level player like Trev, uh, then I can definitely carry that over into NPL Miners, eventually into the NPL, and a couple of other projects that we're working on at the moment. So, yeah guys, uh, that's gonna wrap it up. If you guys did enjoy our GPC Season 6 run as the Montreal Habsols, please make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you have not already. Go check out the GPC Twitter, the GPC YouTube channel, all the coaches in the description as well as Trev, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!